JFT just fair and direct. Okay, hello and good morning everyone. Welcome to JFD Traders Espresso with me, that is on Charles, because today is the 12th of April 2022. So, yep. Welcome everyone, welcome to this um, recorded session guys. So yep, unfortunately, uh, one, uh, we need to I need to run this one today as a recorded session as well. So yep, um, I hope, uh, I hope you, <laughs> you won't be very much disappointed, but uh, uh, hopefully in, near, in the near term, I can get back to uh, running these live again. But anyway, guys, I hope like I said, you're having a wonderful start of Tuesday. Um, before we go further, um, let me quickly just go through our risk disclaimer. So, yep, the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation. It should not be considered as such and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, I'll give you a few seconds to read the rest and we can continue. Okay, so now then, um, also just before we jump in into the charts, a uh, quick um, mentioning of our JFD YouTube channel, to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos, and of course our JFD Bank website, and if you click here on the top, it'll take you uh, to our page, which is updated on a daily basis as well, so yeah, check us out here on jfdbank.com, and click on the research tab, yeah, right there on the top, once it loads up, there we go, that's the one, there we go. Now then, okay guys, jumping into the charts, the first one on the pickup here is Nikkei 225, and uh, yeah, um, it continues to slide, so it dropped below that 26,764 level, they talked about this, and what I said previously, that if we move below it, uh, then yes, uh, we could uh, consider maybe further decline towards the 26,153 level. I spoke about that area yesterday, and uh, yeah, so far so good. I would say yeah, it's drifting in that direction. With um, at the time that I'm recording this video, uh, we still have around half an hour left of trading here on Nikkei. However, um, it, I doubt that it's going to end up uh, somehow bring, jumping back into positive territory. But uh, the question for me here is now. Will we reach this hurdle to be honest I believe that maybe this could be left for um, either tomorrow or maybe later on this week um, in terms of the upside for this one well uh, again I'll come back to the same idea and I'll say that a break uh, above this downside line taken from the high of the 30th of March would be required. Uh, now Shanghai composite guys so uh, beautiful move to the downside and look at this I mean we've reached my target this 3160 zone I spoke about that level uh, yesterday and uh, also uh, last week and uh, look at how well we rebounded from this area yes we did get a breakout but um, we are now seeing uh, yeah a bit of a, a, a rebound here a little bit so okay in other words uh, we still have some time uh, before the close um, yes we're fractionally in the positive territory so that's good uh, for the bulls however I'm not I doubt that we could, you know, see this one, you know, tra traveling very, very much to the upside here. Um, probably you'll end up its trading session somewhere around that zero mark, either in the plus or in the minus. Uh, but what's interesting for me now here is that um, previously um, we looked at this as a target. Now this target became this key important area of support, uh, which if, get, if, if, if it gets broken, then yes, it could um, open the door towards lower levels and we could aim for that lowest point of March near the 3,023 level. <clears throat> now jumping into the German index, DAX, 
So um, here uh, we have a an index which is still struggling with that 14,100 zone. Now, um, of course, uh, of course, we're keeping an eye, a close eye on that hurdle. And let me just check the cash index, by the way. Um, okay, so yeah, that's perfect. So we're not only below that 14,100 area, but we're also below the psychological 14,000 mark. So that's where the interesting bit comes in um, so at the moment yes we got so basically we on the cash index we got that drop below that 4100 level so yep and as I said before that will that could open door towards lower levels and uh, yeah so for now uh uh, for now, we are aiming lower. Uh, we're currently, I'm currently aiming for that 13,577, 78 zone. If the index continues to trade below this area, below this 14,100 zone, um, if we stay below it, then yes, um, yeah, we'll, like I said, my, my, I'm, I'm currently just, uh, I'm going to take a, bear, a bit of a bearish approach. There we go. Um, in terms of the upside, now here, of course, uh, the same game plan. Remains. I need to see a, uh, a break of this downside line uh, in order to get a little bit more comfortable with uh, with the upside. And uh, if we do, like I said, if we do break this this downside line, this could signal a a, sh a, ch a change in the and the a, a change in direction of the current short-term trend. Um, and uh, yep, more buyers could join in then. Now jumping into Dow Jones Industrial Average now. Okay, here uh, we have an index which yeah drifted nicely to the downside yesterday. So in general, uh, the U.S. equities were on a loss, uh, were experiencing a loss yesterday. Um, we. Mm, we, we saw the main top three ones kind of, uh, you know, ending in, in the red. Um, of course, NASDAQ was the, the biggest loser once again. Um, technology kind of got hit uh, strongly. And, uh, of course, the main sector, the main sector that fell apart uh, was the energy sector, then followed by technology and then con uh, communication services. In general, neither of these sectors were in positive territory. The least, uh, let's say, losing um, the least losing sector was were in uh, was industrials, industrial sector, uh, followed by consumer, defensive, and financial. So, in other words, guys, um, at the moment everything is looking quite bearish. And if you remember when I was covering uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average, I talked about this idea, maybe seeing this one as a possible um, kind of uh, head and shoulders pattern here with a neckline being around this three, 34,353 level. Well, we broke that, we uh, we stayed below that, and if we take a look at the cash index, we'll see that it continues to slide. Now, the only little positive thing here is that, um, let me just put this one on the chart, and uh, if this somehow continues to provide support, if this upside line taken from the low the 24th of February, does provide good support and uh, it it holds then yes we might see a nice rebound and a push back to the upside so at the moment yes I'm leaning towards the downside but um, I'm gonna be very careful near this upside line mm, because if it holds we could see a nice rebound and a push back to the upside at the moment also the another little negative aspect here is that we are trading below all of the uh, EMAs right here on our daily chart. Uh, NASDAQ 100, so as I said, the biggest loser yesterday, and uh, look at this uh, continuous, continued slide. Uh, we dropped below that 50% retracement under Fibonacci, and we're now aiming for that 61.8. Now, if we take a look at the cash index right now, where we are sitting at, at the moment, uh, we can see that we are stuck near the 13,940 zone. So basically, we are yeah, uh, of course, below uh, the psychological 14,000 mark. Uh, we closed below that uh, yesterday, um, but we're also below that yesterday's close. So we're kind of aiming for this um, this 13,878 zone, which is the 61.8% retracement here on the Fibonacci. Uh, so we're aiming for that hurdle. 
uh, for now. Um, and then I want to see what's going to happen after that, if we're going to rebound somewhat or not. Uh, because uh, slightly below that level, we do have also a good potential target here, which is this inside swing high of the 9th of March near the 13,793 level. And then we will take it from there, guys. So if we either test the 61.8 or if we drop below it, we could then set test this inside swing high here then yeah this is uh, where I'm gonna keep an eye on it um, basically at the moment we're just seeing some runaway gaps here um, so yeah it's uh, it's not really the if you're kind of applying the logic of you know uh, the money that the market needs to fill the gaps yes it can do that however it sometimes when you have these runaway gaps um, sometimes you cannot really notice these runaway gaps until you see a few of those in, in, in kind of uh, you know happening straightforward in well in a row I would say um, but now yeah um, probably we will see another gap Gap here to the downside and uh, if you are like I said applying this logic that you know the market needs to fill up fill the gaps as I said before it can do that but um, sometimes it might take some time so don't kind of you know just blindly go with that theory um, sometimes it does work out sometimes it doesn't but um, yeah, be very careful. Just rather stick to some support and resistance levels. Uh, now jumping into the uh, DXY, the dollar index. So um, we continue to test that psychological 100 level. So uh, yesterday we uh, we drew, we mm, we tested that area as well, the 100 zone. Today we also tested that area, um, and uh, but now we're kind of uh, just balancing around that one psychological 100 level. Um, here I would say even if it corrects a little bit lower, um, what I'll keep an eye on here is this 99.42 zone as I mentioned before. So if it continues to provide support then yes we could go for some, uh, we could continue going higher. But if this uh, hurdle breaks and then well that's where we could, um, that's where we could consider maybe a bit of a move to the downside towards the 21 day EMA or even if that gets broken then and yeah, lower, even lower levels could be met. But at the moment, guys, the dollar is strong. Um, and uh, yes, of course, uh, we will be keeping an eye on the um, inflation numbers, the U.S. inflation numbers that are coming out today. Um, that's going to be quite interesting to see if, um, if you know, we may, we can beat the forecasts. If we can beat the forecast, uh, then, well, I mean, the, the U.S. dollar might continue strengthening here. Um, now, jumping into silver. Uh, I haven't looked at silver for quite a while, but, um, yeah, this is a slightly different story than to gold a little bit. Um, because we, uh, first of all, we are now pushing nicely to the upside. We popped above that 21 day EMA is shown here as the yellow line. We're now above all of our EMAs. Let me just get rid of all these lines because it seems that yeah, uh, they are a little bit outdated. Um, now, one thing that I wanted to show you, of course, and you probably have noticed this yourselves, that we broke this downside line nicely. Now, um, we broke the broke it to, to the upside, of course, obviously, and uh, now, of course, such a move uh, could be seen as a uh, as a positive one, and at the moment, yes, I am continuing to aim higher on this one, uh, where my next target will be, let me just put this one on the chart, This uh, the high of the 24th of March, uh, near the 25.85 level, and uh, yes, if... Um, <clears throat> If we reach that area, I'll take it from there. For initially, I'm going to just target that, and then I'm going to we will take it from there. Um, in in terms of the downside, now what I would prefer actually here is I don't I do understand that we could be missing out on a bit of territory, but I would rather be uh, safe than sorry. So basically, um, I would like to see a drop below all of the EMAs here on our daily chart first, and then aim for uh, lower levels. So for now, a long story short, yes, I am um, aiming higher, but um, but yeah, only up until here, up until that 25.85 zone. Uh, WTI oil. Uh, so yeah, a bit of a rebound here from this area. I talked about this area, this uh, 93.56. And look at this, we also kind of almost tested this, that 100 day EMA, but we can actually say that, yeah, we did test it. Um, we are now um, rebounding a little bit. Um, however, we were 
getting into this tricky moment here again where we're kind of getting into a bit of a squeeze so uh, yes um, yes we gotta move lower we didn't really reach this upside line but to be honest don't get me wrong I mean we still could do that um, however at this point guys it, because it's becoming a little bit more difficult to see you know in the when the area here is kind of becoming smaller a little bit for the for all that movement um, yes uh, as long as it's gonna stay in between these two lines I'm gonna right now I'm gonna just take a neutral spot and kind of a neutral stand and just observe the price action because if it breaks one of these lines then yes that's where you know the whole excitement could begin again um, either for the bulls or the for the bears uh, we'll see but uh, at the moment as long as it's in between these two lines then yeah I'll, I'll, I'll remain a little bit on the neutral side now XRP USD Ripple um, continues to slide. Yesterday we saw this drop, um, and uh, yeah, it uh, fell below this key important support area near the 0 0.7465. Uh, we drifted further south, and to be honest, looking at this picture, if the dollar continues to rally, guys, I mean this could still remain under pressure and uh, under some selling pressure, and we could see this one continuing to drift lower. Now what we can do here is oh, not grab the wrong one. Um, there we go. So of course we can draw this downside line here, which um, could play out initially. So um, at the moment I'm going to keep an eye on it. So as, uh, you can simplify your life this way that as long as it remains below this downside line taken from the high of the 28th of March, we will continue aiming lower. Um, AUDCHF. So I haven't picked up on this one for quite a while, but let me get rid of all the drawings here. Um, so one thing for sure that you can see is that, that um, we are uh, resting here near this uh, 0 0.6895 area. <clears throat> now, if of course you want to go for lower levels, a break of that area is needed. But what I wanted to show you here, of course, is and you probably might see this yourself, or you know, let's see if this is not going to end up being somewhat of a Mm, a hidden shoulders pattern and uh, if if it will then uh, well this this area right here this 0 0.6895 could be a nice neckline for that pattern and on its break we could go yeah <clears throat> we could go for some lower levels uh, at the moment um, to be honest, like I said, I am considering maybe a bit of a rebound here, uh, maybe a push back towards the, the psychological 0 0.70 territory. But of course, let's not overcomplicate our lives. Uh, first, let's see if that's going to happen or not. At the moment, uh, we're kind of getting a little hold up near that 21 day EMA. So, yeah, if it. Um if it bounces, you know, a little bit stronger, a little bit higher here, then yes, we'll keep an eye on that 0 0.70 zone. But of course, the main focus right now is this 0 0.6895 area. And if we clear that, then uh, my next target will be, um, well, it will be around these two EMAs, the 100 and the 200 day EMA. And uh, then, yeah, we'll just have to take it from there. NZD USD, um, beautiful, nice rebound from this uh, upside line. Um, However, this is where I need to adjust this arrow a little bit. If it climbs above all of the, or actually back above the 0 0.6860 uh, 60 area, or even better, above all of its EMAs, then yes, I will consider a move to the upside again towards this uh, downside resistance line taken from the high of the 25th of February. So, um, at the moment, um, yeah, uh, looking at this picture here, um, I would say everything's looking quite positive. Um, if we do climb above this area and above that, uh, above this 200-day EMA, I'll, I will become a little bit more positive more. Um, although, like I said, although we had this decline, yes, I mean, it doesn't matter. I mean, it's uh, it, we still could rebound it. However, the different, of course, a different story would come if the, we break this upside line, then, then yes, that changes the game and uh, we could then target uh, some lower levels right here. For example, one of the first ones will be this one right here, the the low of the 15th of March near the 0 0.6729 area. Uh, USD JPY, very quickly on that one, that one continues just to, just to push higher, guys. I mean, look at this madness. But um, <clears throat> what I said to you yesterday 
and let me just jump back into a monthly chart uh, what I talked about yesterday was that I said that we I am aiming for that um, highest point of June 2015 or in other words the highest point of 2015 uh, which we managed to reach yesterday so that's a good achievement here and uh, yeah look at this I mean we he clearly reached that area. Now the big question here is can we see, um, you know, a hold up here or even, or let's say a break or some sort or some sort of activity around this area. Um, well, uh, if that gets broken, then of course I'll continue aiming higher. But if this, can, let's say, holds for now, um, then maybe a bit of a correction here could be possible. However, I would prefer to see a break of the this upside line first before aiming for uh, some uh, some lower levels so let's keep that in mind um, like I said at the moment it's uh, it's quite interesting we are at a very very interesting spot um, can we clear this uh, this 125.85 territory if we can and we can stay above it then yeah I'll go for uh, I'll go for some higher levels uh, USD CAD very quickly on this one so beautiful move to the upside and this is what I talked about yesterday guys that initially I am targeting that 208 EMA together with the 108 EMA which we managed to perfectly reach or reach perfectly um, so now the big question here is can we see a further move now as you can see by the arrow that I've drawn here a while ago um, I said that if we pop above the 1.2587 territory yes I'll get an aim for these two EMAs but if these gets if these get cleared uh, my next target is the 1.2694 area right here marked by the inside swing low the 11th of March so for now I will We'll stick to the same plan, um, especially if we pop above the uh, all these EMAs again. Uh, GBP CAD very quickly on that one. So very interesting spot we, that we are sitting in right now. At a very interesting spot we're sitting right, right now. So yeah, we broke this downside line, so that's great news. But uh, we're struggling with this 1.6464 area. So uh, yes, we had a, a few brief visits above it, but still, it's just doing its job and providing resistance. Um, uh, don't get me wrong. I mean, uh, this could yeah go a little bit higher here, but um, at the same time, uh, we might see maybe a bit of a retracement here. Um, so a bit of a corrective move lower. However, I'm going to keep an eye on this little short-term tentative upside line. So maybe we could see a bit of a drift lower here, test of this upside line, and if it holds, yeah, a rebound from it back up could be possible. However, either way, in, in terms of the upside, I still need to see a push, a nice good strong push above this 1.6464, and uh, then I'll aim for that 21-day EMA, EMA, EMA here. Um, I'll go slowly on this, and then so on and so on. Um, yeah. Oh, by the way, coming back to the GBP CAD issue, um, one of my favorite, of course, is the Fibonacci measurement kind of here. So um, this is the tw the 23.6 is actually just slightly above that 21-day EMA. So for example, don't be surprised if we do pop higher, we move high, we move north, we test the 21-day EMA, we climb above it. For example, we test the 23.6% retracement on the Fibonacci, and then let's say come back by the end of the day, kind of come back back below the 21 day EMA so this way kind of confirming a false breakout so we've seen you know such scenarios happening but uh, you know be 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 wary of that um, now euro JPY um, so after it broke out here to the upside it moved nicely higher um, looking at this picture um, yes we can first of all we can get rid of this downside line uh, we can, I can't even I cannot even use it because it's um, yeah, this, the move here is very steep. Um, I will say I'm going to continue targeting the upside. And uh, we have ni moved nicely above this hurdle, this upside line. Um, so in other words, if we if you're looking for some lower levels, guys, um, it's a bit of a tricky situation here with in terms of the downside. So we would like to see maybe a break of this upside line first somewhere around here and then consider a move lower so if we are uh, aiming higher then I would actually stick to a bit of a more conservative approach and uh, wait for a pop above this uh, 137.55 territory just to be a little bit more on the safe side so as long as it's gonna stay in here I just I'm just gonna be very careful because what I don't want to get end up seeing here is a possible range 
because if you see this whole kind of red area, this this is what could happen. So we could tr still push higher a little bit, test the the 137.55 zone, and then let's say fail to overcome it, and then drift back down. So and then kind of confirming a nice little range here. But uh, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Uh, let's <clears throat> initially aim for the well the, for this high uh, the highest point of March. And um, Euro Aussie, um, so still um, still holding on to this downside line, uh, although it did break it, but um, yeah, it's not, let's say, very ideal here. Uh, I don't like these uh, scenarios. So in other words, if we are aiming for the upside, um, I would like to see another push back above this downside line at least at least but then I'll have a problem with the 21 day EMA which is in the way and uh, if but if that gets cleared of course yes higher levels could be met certainly but um, at the moment guys it's uh, we're trying to kind of see and kind of trying to squeeze something from some somewhere uh, where it is not so even for the downside let's say I mean I would actually prefer to wait at least for a drop somewhere below this 1.4566 territory and then maybe yeah, consider a move lower and uh, finally your USD so uh, it continues to trade lower to be honest and uh, the, to be honest I, I mean I'm quite happy with this move here and it's all working out nicely so this area did provide that resistance this 1.0945 uh, area uh, did provide resistance so now we're seeing a bit of a slide and uh, if we drop below this 1.0891 zone, then um, then yes, we will go lower. And uh, yeah, if um, if if we do stay below this 1.0891 area, then my next target is the lowest point of March near the 1.0806, and then we'll take it from there. If it clears that, wonderful. Yeah, well, further declines could be possible. If it doesn't, we might see a nice rebound here and a push up higher. Then we'll just reevaluate things again. So, guys, that's it for this session. So, I once again apologies for not apologies for not running this one live. Um, I, I'm trying to sort it out for tomorrow. Um, so, yep, hopefully, hopefully the live session can uh, go on tomorrow, guys. But yeah, um, thank you very much for watching and listening to this video. Um, thank you very much for your views, your likes, your comments, guys. I really do do, do appreciate that. So thank you very much. Um, if you wanna, like I said, join me tomorrow. Um, join me tomorrow at uh, around six o'clock GMT time. Like I said, I'll do. I will try to run that one live if 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 I'm successful. Um, so yep, then I'll meet you there. So thank you very much, guys, and bye bye.